thank you very much. Um, it's good to be back here. And hopefully I can give you um, what I think is a very interesting story about an estuarine online fishery. And having worked on estuarine online fisheries for a number of years, I struggle to pass one when I'm driving on the N2 or anywhere else without turning around, craning my neck, and trying to count as many anglers as I can. It frustrates my wife, and it probably scares the drivers behind me. But the fact is that our estuaries are um, important areas for resource use for line fishing. And in South Africa, it's estimated there's about 230,000 uh, recreational shore and boat fishermen operating throughout our country on the estuaries. And they're also important for livelihoods. We don't have a good idea of the numbers, um, but there's estimated at over 30,000 subsistence fishermen or small-scale commercial fishermen, as they're now called in South Africa. Despite the importance or the amount of resources that happens on them, there's very few estuarine systems in South Africa that have actually been formally assessed. And those that have, have shown a similar sort of picture, that your fishing pressure is targeting and the main catch is comprising of very few species, including your white stingbrush, spotted grunter, cape stump nose, leophis, and dusky cob. The problem with this is that we know that many of our lionfish species are overexploited, meaning that your population levels have decreased to certain critical levels, either overexploited or collapsed. And if you have a look at your white stingbrush, sitting at about 6%, so that's your SPR is your big adult spawning um, stock, so your, your large fish. About 94% of them have gone from historic times. And if you look at your dusky cob, it's sitting at, at, at a worse state with about 98% depleted. In the wilderness lake system, you've got an, another interesting um, dynamic to it in that you have four invasive, alien invasive species. Now, no one's going to be trying to target the little mosquito fish, but in freshwater systems, we know that um, there are specialist anglers who target the other three, your common carp, your largemouth bass, and your Mozambique tilapia. So that's a system that we worked on. We didn't um, survey the entire area because uh, the lung flay and the ronda flay part of the system is actually closed to fishing. Um, so we worked from the tow estuary through the Serpentine and Island Lake. We used roving creel surveys, so you systematically move through the fishing through the area, and as you um, encounter fishermen, uh, you interview them. So you're interviewing them during their fishing trip. Uh, we did equal effort across months, and our random, we randomly started random days um, and random start times in random areas. Basically, what it, we wanted to pick up was how much fishing effort is occurring, so where is it occurring, how many people. Um, we wanted to look at the catch, so what's the composition, how many fish are being caught, uh, what is the size frequency, so that, um, what are the different sizes of those fish are being caught, and then some information around the anglers. So, for example, uh, place of residence, motivations, and things like that. So over the last 18 months, uh, we, have we have completed 54 survey days, 380 anglers have been uh, counted, 322 interviewed. Um, it's a male-dominated fishery, and 74% of the anglers actually came from three areas, George, Toes, Runton, and Clancrans, so it's very localized. 45% of the anglers are fully employed, 11% have part-time employment, and 25% are unemployed. If we looked at uh, what was motivating anglers to go fishing, there was a very strong, so a lot of anglers have multiple motivations, um, but one of the common themes was this need to de-stress, unwind, and relax. And then 33% uh, were fishing specifically for food. So those are your more subsistence or supplementary guys um, going down and then taking that food back to supplement household um, diet. And then there were uh, fewer people that were fishing either because they enjoyed the sport, uh, spend time with family, um, spend time alone, or um, with friends. Why were people going to uh, the tow estuary or the, the wilderness lake system? Um, and the most common reason was because it was actually, it was close and easy to get to. Not easy access, easy to get to. Um, it was also very familiar. They had been fishing there for a number of years. Um, fewer people said that it was a good place to go and catch a, a species that they were particularly wanting to catch, only 13%. And then bank access and, and boat access was um, less important. And you can think that a lot of that tow estuary in particular um, has got private land, so access is a little bit restricted anyway. If we looked at frequency of fishing, uh, about 29% of the anglers actually fished only um, less than 10 times in a year, so less than a month, I mean less than once a month. 
And that's reflected in our re-interview rate where we had quite a high, about almost 70% of anglers were only interviewed once. Right, so what's the fishing effort? That was at first level. And we know we're not gonna be interviewing everyone. We're gonna be missing a lot of people. Um, there's an avidity bias to roving creel surveys, so you're only getting the most, um, most frequent, or the most, the anglers who f fish more frequently, you're gonna have a higher chance of intercepting them. Um, but if we use um, equations provided by Prodevant and we have our sample size, we can actually work out um, an estimation of what the angler participation was, which is about 400 anglers for that system which I think is actually a little bit low. But we also have a turnover rate because you're only gonna be there for a short time of, day, of the day, we're about four hours, our surveys took about four hours. Um, so working again with other equations, you can work out a turnover rate. So those people that you're likely to miss. So then we use that, what we have observed, multiplied by the turnover rate to get an estimated total daily fishing effort. And then you can work out your monthly effort. Um, so the two different years, and you can see there's a pretty much difference between months, but also this, sort of bowl shape, which you normally expect to see on estuarine fisheries, a decrease in fishing effort over the winter periods. Our total estimated fishing effort was just over 2,600 angler outings per year, or um, just over 13,000 angler hours. So fishing effort is not homogenous. Um, there's certain hot spots of areas. Um, you can see the tow estuary at uh, the lower section, this middle section of the serpentine, and then um, one area of the island lake, which had more fishing pressure than others. We did use generalized linear mixed methods model uh, to see what sort of, uh, what were the parameters that were influencing angler accounts. Um, and from that, uh, we came up with uh, that your season is having a, a strong impact. So we're having more um, fishing pressure over the autumn and summer periods and decreasing over winter. You had more, more fishing pressure over weekends. And these are common trends, you see it in almost every fishery. fishery. Um, and then there was more anglers over the mouth open state than the closed state. And that's an interesting, com interesting point, which I'll come back to later. So if you're looking at catch, one of the key components you first need to then think about is what's been targeted. So overall, um, most of the anglers are actually saying, well, we're here to, we, we're just gonna see what's biting so we can catch whatever's there. Um, but the most commonly targeted species over this 18 months has been tilapia, Mozambique tilapia. So not an endemic species. But what's targeted differs across where you are in the estuary. So if you looked at it in the tow estuary, then garrick is the most commonly targeted species, followed by spotted grunter and then your Mozambique tilapia. In the serpentine, Mozambique tilapia were targeted almost exclusively, so it was 98.9% of the time. And then in Island Lake, White Steam Brace, Spotted Grunter, and Mozambique Tilapia. So the common one all the way across is Mozambique Tilapia. We also looked at it between the mouth open and closed phase, um, and there was a, a big switch in what was being targeted. When your mouth is open, 28% of the anglers are targeting an endemic species, that White Steam Brace. And if you have your, your mouth is closed, it switches to targeting Mozambique Tilapia. But you can see again, those usual suspects are coming up. If we had a look at catch over the entire period, Mozambique tilapia comprised more than 50% of the total catch that anglers were, were, were taking, um, followed by white stem breast and then Cape stump nose. Um, I put this down here because with every fishery you have a bait fishery. And what was very interesting from this system that we haven't picked up in any other system is that the bait, the predominant bait that's been used by the anglers are earthworms that have been dug at home. So you've got a very low bait fishery on the tow estuarine system. The, the one bait species that is collected there is your um, sand prawn and that's just down by the mouth. Your catch composition does change between the mouth open and closed phase. So when it is closed, your Mozambique tilapia really dominated catches. And then when the mouth is open, almost 50% of the catch is made up by white stem breasts and then Cape stump nose and again, tilapia. Uh, we had a total estimated annual catch of just under 6,000 fish for the year. But if we have a look at those two endemic species, so Cape stump nose, white stem breasts, and we'd have a look at the size frequency, of the fish that have been caught. So 
within every within the recreational fishery you have different regulations one of those regulations is a size limit so you meant to only keep fish of a certain size that allows the fish to grow to grow to, and to breed before they are removed from the system and what you can see is that the majority of fish being caught are way below that minimum size limit unfortunately this is not something that's new to the tow estuary and we're seeing it in multiple different other systems. So we've seen it in um, Swatlay, we've seen it in Sundays, we've seen it in Kawi, we've seen it in, in, in many systems. And the retention of the undersized fish is undermining the regulations and contributing to why those populations are so low. Our catch being an effort, and this is still a story we're trying to tease out what really happened here. But when we started with our, our surveys, Yes, there's huge variability. These are the 95% confidence, but you had high catch rates at the beginning and then it dropped off. So one, one um, environmental aspect that did occur within the system in March, April of 2022, when we started, we had a cyanobacteria bloom in Island Lake, and Island Lake was closed for a while. Um, but then it, it dropped off and it stayed pretty low. Our overall annual catch per net effort of 0.32, that sort of fits in right in the middle of where many other estuarine systems come in, so Swatflay, Nisna, and other areas. So it's not particularly up or down. Um, and then the catch per unit effort between the mouse states, again, there was a significant, significant difference with your catch rates actually being lower during your open phase. So even though you had increased fishing effort and you had a change in target species, so people were really wanting to catch those white stem breast, your catch per unit effort was actually lower. But there's another caveat to that, in that the closed phase is being pushed up by these early high catches in the beginning of the survey. And if I look at the catch composition during that period, it was a lot of um, Mozambique tilapia that were caught in the serpentine area. So if we come back to the original question, um, can an invasive fish species reduce fishing pressure on endemic species? I don't think the answer is actually as clear as simple as a yes or a no. And if we think of the fishery as a social ecological system, and it's nested within an estuarine social ecological system, these different systems are interacting. So in the social system, you've got different angler desires, values, and traditions. But on the other hand, in the ecological system, you've got your fish species, you've got your, your um, diversity, your abundance, and then I also think you have a behavioral component to it. You've got the habitat, you've got water quality that can come into it. Um, mouth stays has definitely been, definitely been shown to have an, to have an influence. Um, so, um, and sorry, um, if you look at the estuarine system and how that's affecting the fishery system, our mouths are manipulated, manipulated to reduce flooding for developments in low-lying low areas. So that's having an influence on the fishery. So if I answered the question, mosquito fish we know is not. Um, the other two species, your largemouth bass and your common carp are not. Um, but when the mouth is closed over summer, and where the water levels are higher, then I think the fishery is, well, it is dominated by tilapia. You're having a shift in targeting effort. But when the mouth is open, and it's during winter, and those white stem are more active, you're seeing a switch immediately back to them. Thank you very much.